Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you are in recovery or not. This is episode 85, 16 Reasons Why Sex is Better in Recovery. A few months into dating my sweetheart, I remember sharing in a meeting, it was a women's meeting, that I knew that recovery had seeped its way into the cracks and crevices of my life in so many ways but it never occurred to me that it would affect my sex life. And what I shared in the meeting was something like, I am able to let it rip in a way that I never could before recovery. Now, don't get me wrong. I always enjoyed sex. It's not that I didn't enjoy sex, but not like this. So what happened after my share was somebody said a comment that is often heard from people in recovery meetings but in this case it was hilarious and it was keep coming because we usually say keep coming back or keep coming especially to people who've just started coming or people who are just returning and all that sort of thing and what's funny is it's kind of a standing joke where from time to time when it's relevant um, we'll say that again and it's really kind of hilarious but i feel the need to share more and so here are my 16 reasons why sex is better in recovery and by the way it's way better number one i'm present i'm not dissociated So I'm actually there with my partner, paying attention and enjoying myself. Number two, I'm in my body because I'm comfortable in my own skin in a way that I just was not before recovery, which I didn't even realize I wasn't comfortable in my own skin until I became comfortable in my own skin. Number three, I'm not inebriated. No upset about that one. Number four, I'm not mired in fear. And this actually covers a lot of the things on this list because my main fear was of other people and what they would think of me. So that fear is amplified when you're making love with someone. And because I'm not mired in fear anymore, it kind of takes away so much of the crap. Number five, I'm whole. So I'm not trying to protect myself. In other words, I'm willing to be vulnerable with my partner. And man, does that make all the difference in the world in the bedroom. Number six, I'm not people pleasing. I'm doing what I really want to do and asking for what I really want and getting it and oh my god it's amazing number seven i'm allowing myself to try things i never did before and to tell my partner this is a little scary for me can you help me p.s he loves being asked to help me with anything but especially in the bedroom number eight I had a conversation with my partner about sex before we ever had sex to to discuss my hopes and fears about sex that were based on my past experiences. I didn't go into any details at all with him about my past experiences. Thank you to the fellow who coached me through that conversation. It was about principles rather than personalities. Let me tell you, that led to some serious emotional intimacy and it put a whole bunch of stuff on the table for both of us. It was absolutely fantastic in framing our relationship in general, but especially our sexual relationship. And by the way, I do have his permission. I did ask him, not that I need it, but I wanted his permission. And I told him I'm not going to share any details or anything like that. But. Um, He was totally cool with me doing this. He was like, absolutely, bring it out there. 
Number nine, I got to know my partner well and establish trust and emotional intimacy before we had sex, which enhanced our sexual relationship. This is also one of the things that explains a lot of the other stuff that's on this list, but this is something I was absolutely incapable of doing before recovery. Number 10, I'm able to let it rip in ways that I never did before. So I didn't realize I had been doing things. I always really enjoyed sex before, but not like this. I wasn't able to really just let go and enjoy and not feel like I had to like tense up or do something or be something or whatever. It's just, I'm just literally able to just go with it. Number 11, I communicate directly with my partner about our relationship. So there are never any things left unsaid that get in the way in the bedroom. Number 12, I'm very clear about my values and priorities and time with my partner is sacrosanct. Number 13, I am deeply appreciative of my partner and the quality of our relationship, especially in comparison to previous relationships. And I express that to my partner very frequently. I let him know just how much I appreciate him and I'm very concrete about what I appreciate about him. Number 14. I can tell the truth and admit that I love sex without it being a way to attract partners before we really know each other. So I would do things before recovery when I was dating men that I, I would now call it dropping bait. And it was kind of a way to let them know that I really enjoy sex and it was a way for me to attract them because I think deep down I thought that was what I had to offer. And I also didn't know how to be intimate with people in any way other than physically. And so to me, that was how you did it. Number 15, I don't expect my partner to read my mind and know what pleases me. I actually tell him and it makes him really happy. Also, it kind of turns him on. Number 16, I just read this list to my partner and he pulled out the book, Intimacy in Alcoholic Relationships, and we're gonna read it together. Who doesn't wanna fuck a guy like that? So these are my reasons uh, that sex is so much better and I can't, end this without mentioning how incredibly important boundaries are. One of the things that attracted me the most about him in the beginning was that he had fantastic boundaries. And I have really good boundaries too now, which I didn't before. And that has really contributed to me being whole and has sustained me being whole. And if you need help with your boundaries, I'd like to invite you to two different things. One is on Monday, December 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. This is 2020. Uh, I will be hosting a free webinar on myths and misconceptions about boundaries. I'll put a link in the show notes. And two, I am going to be piloting a group coaching program called Six Weeks to Better Boundaries with Barb. I will also put the link to find out more information or register for that in the show notes. I will tell you, if you come to the free webinar, you might actually win a free membership into the six week coaching program. So I hope to see you there. And I hope that this is helpful to you and that your sex life is enhanced by your recovery in at least, if not more ways than I have. Be well. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net 
or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep, lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.